see the screen? Yeah. This screen, the presentation. Can everybody see the presentation screen? I can. Yeah, I can. Okay. She just called the order. Yeah, I was trying to call the order. I need a camera. Roll call, please. Yes, sir. 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 Yes,
hearing your input and answering questions along the way uh, as well. So this is kind of our Christmas party also. So okay. it's where the, the pizza came from. Sir. But I might have overbought, so feel free, feel free to eat whatever you want. Or take home when you leave. Yeah, unfortunately, but me and, the, me and the Domino's people were having a, a nice conversation as I was waiting and waiting and waiting. <laughs> Some of the aspects when I saw some of the comments, I pretty much knew what group at least it came yes. from. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yes. so yeah, all opinions are you know valid and we want to be thinking about but understand there's right. a lot more than just those that participate in If this passes, we want Patricia to sign it tonight. Yeah, please. Anybody want a little water? Yeah, Patricia. Uh, we'll jump right into here that, you know, presentation is a kind of an opportunity for us to walk through things, but this is meant to be an open discussion and, uh, you know, we have questions, comments, or things like that along the way that you want to bring up in the draft that you have reviewed. Uh, now is our opportunity to chat through some of those things. I will note, you know, even the little things on, um, I just heard, you know, Patricia's last name is spelled incorrectly on the acknowledgments. Uh, those types of things we can chat about though, you know, I'm happy to take those in an email if you want to send them to somebody um, too. We don't need to capitalize all of our time on some of those, you know, they're important things we want to get fixed, but we don't need to, you know, spend um, kind of all that, you know, we don't need to focus on some of those things as well. I also wanted to note just as a high level um, from a, the photograph perspective is we're working with uh, the city to change and add a lot of photos um, throughout, so using some city stock of 
existing recreation photos. So you will see as we're addressing changes and comments um, from the input that we get from you, you will see some changes in the, the photos and images that are used throughout this document uh, as well. But from an agenda standpoint, um, we'll, we'll um, have the presentation that's laid out. We'll kind of step through the, the six different sections uh, of the outdoor recreation plan and hit on a couple of the, the high points and a couple of things that we want to, to chat about along the way. So as I step through, if there are things, questions, you know, we'll kind of stop at each point with an opportunity for you all to share and, and chat through things uh, as well from that perspective. So. Um, as a reminder, um, we've talked about this before, but we have six uh, kind of sections or chapters of the outdoor recreation plan, and we'll step through each of them um, from our introduction and key themes and goals, community context, existing park inventory and trail network, our needs assessment and recommendations and implementation. So if we think back to all of the meetings and times that we've gathered, we've set through, uh, you know, the different components of, of these processes and the plan itself is our opportunity to you know, showcase and highlight the work that was done there. Before we jump into the content of the plan itself, I wanted to just make a quick connection uh, between if we remember back to kind of some of the, the purpose behind or, uh, the outdoor recreation plan is making sure that we are uh, responding to the DNR's requirement, requirements for an outdoor recreation plan so that this plan can be used to apply for grant funding with the DNR. So we wanted to make sure that we are making that connection. I think we've talked about um, those requirements uh, throughout the process, but you can kind of see the direct connection um, here between some of the different chapters. So um, the items on the left side of your screen are the requirements that the DNR lays out for what they need and want to see within a comprehensive outdoor recreation plan, um, and then just where they are located uh, within the draft as presented. So, for example, we're required to talk about goals and objectives, um, and that's located in that section two, our key themes and goals. Uh, we you know, need to talk about the planning process that was used to um, get to the results that we are presenting and including in the plan that's included in the introduction. So I uh, just wanted to make that direct connection. Um, and I also, I didn't highlight it here, but there are certain things that are asked for from the DNR um, that get included that you're kind of like, huh, why does this get included? An example of that is the, you know, rec the items that are currently outlined within your capital improvement plan is something that the DNR wants to see uh, within an outdoor recreation plan. So that's why it's included in reference within the document as an appendix so that obviously that CIP gets updated and so you don't want to have to update your outdoor recreation plan every time you have a brand new CIP, but having it in the appendix there, there's at least reference to it and you could just update that appendix. You don't actually have to go through and update you know, the plan every time you have a new CIP. But um, so just another reference of you know, some of that information there as well. Uh, so now we'll step uh, through um, chapter by chapter, um, and again, an opportunity for you all to, you know, let's, let's chat about it, likes, dislikes, um, kind of an open book from that standpoint. So chapter one, or that first section, is our introduction, and really here we're looking to focus on, you know, the purpose of the plan, uh, why do we have the authority to do this, what are we trying to achieve uh, with the outdoor recreation plan, uh, again, what was the planning process that we undertook, making sure that we're responding to that DNR requirement there, um, identifying some of the outdoor recreation uh, roles within the community, what does outdoor recreation mean to River Falls, and then another requirement from the DNR is just talking about how this plan can be amended. So similar to our comprehensive plan, this isn't a, you know, etched in stone document, it can be amended and changed. So just outlining the process um, is something that the DNR asks that we include in, in a plan of this nature. So uh, just before we um, kind of open the door there too, a lot of this is um, historic things that are included here that we've talked about before, um, but just wanting to highlight the outdoor recreation roles um, that we identified in kind of six key areas that were really highlighted through either the analysis that we completed or really a lot of the discussion from a community engagement 
um, perspective. And so the first of which being that, you know, recreation is a big piece of our community identity. That was heard loud and clear um, throughout all phases of, of input on the Focus River Falls process is that when people think of River Falls, they think about outdoor recreation um, and those different opportunities. That direct connection uh, to that recreation provides for both the physical health of our communities and for having opportunities to get out and be physical, but also the social and uh, mental health uh, benefits of recreation as well, also tied to our open space, having those uh, that green spaces or abilities and spaces to connect um, and, and have that social and mental health. Um, another piece that was really highlighted throughout engagement was that access to natural resources. Um, our, many of our parks being spaces that are built around some of our natural resources and trying to um, improve and enhance the access to those natural resources. Our parks and recreation is also an opportunity for us to um, enhance our focus on sustainability and resilience. Um, and then finally, recognizing the role that uh, recreation here in River Falls plays for tourism and economic development. There are a lot of people that come to the community to you know, go use the cork and go mountain biking or, you know, come for a, a disc golf tournament night or things like that. So it's bringing, recreation brings people uh, into the community and does have a role um, in terms of our overall tourism and economic development. They come to the community and come in home and they stop a quick trip for a, a Coke or fill up their gas tank and things of that nature. They're not going to Tatterstall or, or things like that. So, um, with that, I wanted to pause on kind of the introduction piece and see if anybody had any high level reactions, comments, questions about the kind of four key pieces that were included here in the introduction to the plan. They were all given on Friday, so yeah. they haven't have had a chance. So. Yeah. And it, we, if um, there too, I know, you know, maybe this presentation will help to understand maybe an opportunity for you to kind of re-look and go back at a couple things too. So if there, if we need a little uh, additional time to understand. So the intent of your review is for us to take your comments and feedback, go back and update the plan before it moves into the next part of the review process as well. So this plan will go, as we've discussed, to Plan Commission next. Um, they're reviewing the bike and pedestrian plan. Normally, that's already gone through their steering committee. So, um, you know, just kind of in terms of what we're looking to get from you here tonight. Well, I'll let you know, having read it, then hearing your narrative will then going back, giving us a, a second look at it. So you might have some <coughs> silence tonight, but that's just, I, I will have some comments, <laughs> just not on the first one. Um, but I, I want you to know that we have read it and uh, it's helpful to hear you talk it through and then, okay, now go sure. look at it again. Sure. She looks like she does. I think our hope tonight was to have you forward this to plan commission and council. Um, it doesn't mean that it wouldn't have modifications after this. So if you have items that you want changed tonight, those can be included. It also means that as we have the public review come February, there's more opportunities for it to change and be modified. But that's what we were hoping was on the table for you this evening, just so we're clear about that. So. I'll keep moving on, keep moving. Um, key themes and goals. This is, uh, uh, you know, as easy as it is from a section of just highlighting the key themes and goals that were established through this process. These are um, goals that you've seen multiple times. So really just that's the section that we are um, <laughs> identifying there. We won't read through them um, here, but that's really the, the content of, of the section highlighting those um, key themes that were identified and then the um, seven goal statements that were associated with them. So. 
So we've seen them before, but maybe there are new thoughts or comments that came up as well. Um, our next section gets into our community context uh, section, which is um, really to kind of get back to DNR requirements and trying to respond. The, they ask that we look at social characteristics, so who is who the community is, um, and then the physical characteristics uh, of the community as well. Uh, so we are trying to um, through this section. There's obviously a we did a, a broader community context as part of the, you know, in one of the early phases of the Focus River Falls process. So we were trying to um, build from that that is, a, will be included in an appendix for the comprehensive plan. So there's greater detail um, provided in there, but we're trying to respond at a high level so that there's some context to those specific things that are connected to um, our recreation system uh, from that perspective. Um, so again, social characteristics is really looking at the demographics, age groups, changing population, things of that nature, physical characteristics and natural resources, obviously, our historic resources, our, um, our you know, wetlands and things of that nature, and then our park system as well. So a couple things that were highlighted here and kind of are in the beginning part of the uh, social characteristics that are really some of the uh, components that we were thinking about regarding the community context is that you know here in River Falls the population is growing and when you look at the age breakdown even if you take out the university population you have a large group of people that are in that 20 to 30 age group and a lot of kind of connects there are lots of children in the community as well and um, so just understanding that growth is happening we talk about the population projections that were established as part of the focus River Falls process so we're anticipating that the community is going to grow and that we're going to need to continue to invest in additional recreation opportunities as that growth uh, happens um, and also recognizing that um, there that younger population group also has some very specific needs in terms of how they use our recreation uh, system and things like that um, rec, um, noting the connection to natural resources, again, that we, um, there are a lot of great um, high quality resources within the community. I'm just reemphasizing from an engagement perspective as well that that connection and access to those natural resources is important for us. And then just recognizing as well that recreation preferences change uh, as people change and grow so do their needs um, and practices and how they engage with recreation. So, um, you know, 10 years from now, um, I may, maybe I'm picking up pickleball at that point, I don't know. But, you know, as we change, um, different needs change and also, you know, different, like pickleball emerges in some of those things. So just recognizing that just because we have what we have now, you know, we have, it's not, that doesn't necessarily need to be the standard for how we move forward um, as well, that we need to be responsive and we're looking at what we can in a glimpse of time, but things happen, things change, and that we will need to be flexible from that standpoint. So are these percentages taken off the 2020 census? Yes. And the 28% includes the college? Correct. People, okay. Yep. So a lot of this is context that we we presented very early in the planning process coming from that community context report um, as well. And um, the goal with particularly its connection to the comprehensive plan as well is that we are trying to, you know, in some obviously new demographic data comes out and it's our opportunity to, you know, analyze and really be thinking about, you know, how preferences change in some of those things. So, um, you know, the goal is to, where we can have those things maybe live outside of the plan or in an appendix, um, it just gets to be a little bit of a sticky situation with just making sure that we're very clear on including these elements to respond so that the DNR can clearly see the connection to some of these things to make sure that we're checking those boxes. Um, as well, but um, yeah. Any comments, thoughts, reactions on the community context? 
section. I'm looking good. Okay. Uh, the next section that we get into is our existing park inventory and uh, overview of the trail network. And so um, there's a couple things that, you know, here I would, if people have input on how things are included within the document versus an appendix, that's something, you know, people have reactions to like the massive, this is a big section of the plan. So wanted to bring that up as a discussion point. We also want to talk a little bit about the the inventory in here as well, but this section really gives our definitions of our park classification. So ground setting, what is a regional park? How does that differ from a neighborhood park or a pocket park? So establishing uh, those definitions for us. And then it uh, goes through our inventory and description of the existing parks that we have identified within the community through our inventory process and then the amenities that have been identified associated with each of those. Uh, so, and this is just one of those examples where there is a, an appendix as part of this plan that includes some more you know, detailed mappings. We can get into and be able to see kind of the locations of these parks a little differently, but also that inventory document that we spent time and worked on over the summer is included there as an appendix. Um, that's, you know, something that grows and changes um, as well, so it's there as a reference point for us, but is included not within the plan itself, but as an appendix um, from that standpoint. Um, so I wanted to kind of step through uh, for us as well. Um, some of the, you know, these are, should not be new for us. We've been talking about the classifications of these different parts, um, but recognizing how they are included within the plan. Um, as well, we wanted to um, give each of these categories space for us to understand the size and function and amenities uh, that each of these individual parts have. So it's an opportunity of, as somebody looks, um, looks at this plan, they could kind of understand the different resources within the community and the different amenities that um, come with them. So, of course, we have our, starting with our, our regional parks, we have our four uh, regional parks identified there and recognizing that these are the parks that provide, uh, that serve a, a broader area. They have served the entire community and even, you know, the region around. They're meant to, you know, serve a, a broader crowd and some different function from that standpoint. Uh, then we have our neighborhood parks, which are generally smaller in size and are really meant to serve the population within a quarter to a half mile um, <coughs> area around it. So um, providing a little different function and then definitely a, a smaller space than the regional park from that standpoint. Then we have our uh, pocket parks. Um, which I think, you know, that through this opportunity or, you know, as we identified what these pocket parks are, we learned some different things in terms of some history and how things came about, or even, um, you know, we'll use the power park for an example, you know, what, what are we thinking about what a park is and, and classifying things, you know, we have the, the plaza right out here also identified as a park um, from that perspective, but of course those pocket parks are those very, you know, small little areas that provide a recreation um, function as well. Um, and then we have our special use uh, parks that are specifically areas that are um, provide a recreation function, but they um, maybe provide a very specific recreation function or provide a broader <laughs> use as well. So from a veterans park perspective, you might, I think, you know, the, the <coughs> came up is veteran, veterans park be a neighborhood park versus a um, special use park. We've been identifying it as a special use park throughout this process, um, but just some of the, you know, entertainment or the fact that the um, Veterans Park can host some um, musical yeah. events and things like that was, you know, I think part of the reason why we had identified it as a special use park um, as we, we started going. Um, but I did want to, um, you know, we've been using these categories um, throughout this entire process, but as we reviewed things and looked back, I wanted to bring up uh, kind of two areas that we identify here as special use parks, but are actually resources that are within our regional parks or neighborhood parks that we've talked about, and specifically really getting at the um, Hoffman Park 
um, amenities specifically. Um, just be, so we, um, and I think there's, this has maybe evolved too from the, the last time you all had seen the inventory, we had included the Grow to Share Garden specifically as a special use park, but that is a component of Hoffman Park. Um, so we don't, um, and we didn't, hadn't, hadn't been including the stadium, for example, as a special use park also within Hoffman Park. But the draft that you had before you expands the Grow to Share concept to include kind of those amenities that provide a special use beyond just the general recreational use um, of, of the, the regional park use of, of Hoffman Park for that example. So I think, you know, in, um, in thinking about how we want to categorize this, um, and Amy, stop me if I'm headed in the wrong direction here, but I think that we wanted to kind of throw out to this group if, um, if we wanted to categorize these, so we're, we're setting a little bit of a precedent potentially about how we include different things as special use parks, particularly when there are amenities within another park. And so the discussion became whether we should, do these need to be highlighted as a special use park or do we just make sure that we're highlighting these amenities as part of the regional parks that are discussed because they are you know, a part of Hoffman Park. So we just make sure to highlight them as amenities from that perspective. I don't know, Amy. And I think staff's inclination was to not put them as a special use park. They're not a park, they're an amenity within a park. Well, I was gonna say the pool so, within Glen Park, you would wanna have a special amenity because it's the only park we have a pool in. Right. Yeah. yeah, so that's, there's, you know, kind of, we don't want to, you know, in reviewing and looking back at it, not wanting to set a precedent where, okay, now we're going to, you know, build a nice ice rink somewhere, and now not only do we have to update the plan to say that this ice rink is in Hoffman Park or whatever, but we now have to add a, another special use park because of the amenities that this ice rink provides, or I'm throwing out a random example. Does the DNR, does that matter to the DNR? Yeah. Not necessarily, it's more of the standards that you're providing. So the one piece that this will, because they are special use parks, there is some in the analysis piece, we do talk about the overall number of parks and using that as a metric to how we compare. Obviously we are exceeding and the loss of these two parks will not make us deficient by any means. Um, so we're, we're okay from, that perspective, you know, in the longer term, I'm jumping ahead, but, you know, we show from the high standard that we could use another regional park by 2045, making these changes isn't going to change that deficiency. That's going to stay um, the same. But what that will do, it's more on the, the city side of how we want to manage our recreational areas moving forward. It's just much cleaner that we are using this, you know, very clear definition of your regional park if here are the amenities within any of the special use parks that we are identifying are their own geographical location. They aren't identified as a, a park in any other category. They are just their own special use park. Yeah, because what it happens if grocery does find someplace else to go and now it's in our time. Yes. Yeah. I mean, the baseball team's not going to go anywhere. It could become ours, more ours. But anyway, um, <laughs> but yeah, that, that you know. And then the, just because as I look at the list now, all of a sudden I'm thinking, why would Whitetail Ridge not necessary take it out of that one and put it in a special use? Because yeah, I know it's linear of trails, but it's definitely a special use. Yeah. Yeah. Am I wrong? <laughs> Give me that look. No. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so that it's just, I think we kind of hit a gray area when we were going through the inventory from that perspective. And now seeing as it laid out in this fashion, I think opens, you know, just there's a policy process that we're establishing here that we don't want to. I think the theme is. We're still having discussions about yeah. the inventory and these categories, yeah. so they may shift within after tonight to even just. Well, yeah, time. even because Sterling Hills is really in. Yes. In, in the park. Yes. Because yes. we don't have Hoffman Park disc golf on that one. <clears throat> yeah, that it's as big, but so that one, you know, the, really the only one is kind of special use. 
in a way to me is the dog park but well i don't know why north winter parkway isn't under a pocket park because it, it would be similar to the power plant park or Austin, well not Austin's park but in law park right yeah. just and isn't that part of the kitty tonight's in the wing yeah or no the north no. north winter no. that's that meridian that's just for some reason there's just that wide meridian oh yeah so between. It, how this grew was partly through Meg Stifter's group as well. They were ah, involved. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, what the heck is this? Inventory, and I think from their perspective, it was something that they were maintaining. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was yeah. included as well. So it got broader than what we might normally think about. Yeah. And I think the important thing for us to think about too, in terms of the recreation, Things are a recreational resource, even if they don't have a playground or a ball field on them. Open space is still still a form of outdoor recreation and are you know major things that contribute to when we go back to that social and mental health. If it's a place I can gather or it's just a, it's a nice way for me to connect to green space and things like that. That still is providing a recreation function just in a different way than we think about being active as well. So um, but I think the, the maintenance and responsibility piece is a key fact. So, you know, the question would be, is, is it a special use park or should yes, it be a, a pocket park? Pocket park. Yeah. So, so I think what we are, are hearing here is that Sterling Hills and the Hoffman Park amenities will come out. I want to just be very clear that we are not going to lose the content or context that was included in the description of these. We'll make sure that that remains in the plan. Um, you know, the um, baseball association is mentioned a couple times. Grow to share is mentioned a couple times in terms of the agreements or collaborative uses that we have. So we want to make sure that we're recognizing those. We're not going to lose that context within the plan. So we'll just end up moving that description to be seated within the Hoffman Park description or the Sterling Ponds description. Um, so what I'm hearing here is that we're going to remove the disc golf and Hoffman Park amenities to be seated within their the overall parks and that we any comments or reaction to moving North Winter Parkway to a pocket park or we are right. at the park. Mm -hmm. park. So are we maintaining Sterling Hills disc golf? Well, the Eventually. Eventually. Okay, eventually we will. Okay. That doesn't change my mind. I'm just, just wondering if we maintain that. Like we, we, we will. Yeah. They will. <laughs> you won't. <laughs> and and I, I wouldn't say it's going to be heavy maintenance. So no, it's probably like cork. I mean, yep. right now it's set up that it'll be a lot of volunteer effort. Um, yeah, we may do a little bit of driveway prep, some parking, um, help with amenities. But I think for the most part, we anticipate that be more volunteer led like cork is. Yeah, that's kind of the model. And I think it's important too for us with like to, for the longevity and you know, if ever the disc golf group disbands, you know, there, you know, what is that is the responsibility that falls back is recognizing how we're operating today so when changes occur there's reference back to that within the plan so we can be thinking about how we change maintenance and operations opportunities you know there too so particularly when things are volunteer based because we know volunteers change and all of those things so excellent and the thing i, I just want to make sure to reiterate back um you know, with these changes, we will um, technically lose two parts in the number that we are saying that's not going to impact anything from a metric standpoint. We are still far exceeding the, you know, national average for communities of our size. Um, and so, you know, nothing will, it's not going to impact us from a recommendation standpoint from, from that standpoint. So just wanting to make sure to emphasize that. Well, I just, I want to point out on page, I don't know if we're there yet before I forget, but on page 16, uh, under regional parks, it says we have three and we have four. And it says total acreage of these three to four is 28 acres. And I know, yeah, it's it should be more than 60 or 70 acres. 
Okay. Double check. Appreciate that. Okay. Um, so yes, yeah, so we've talked about our pocket parks and our special use parks, um, and then referencing our uh, linear parks, and then um, from the trail network perspective, the identifying the various trails and sidewalks um, that are kind of inventory within the community as well. Obviously, this isn't ever changing. Um, you know, particularly as we start to implement that great bike and pedestrian plan, um, you know, those numbers are going to grow and change and, and things of that nature, but this is our, um, so you'll probably see more changes in those numbers um, than, you know, your park numbers, you know, on a more rapid base as well. And I know we're not supposed to tell you about spelling, but it says River Fills Park. Oh, that linear. Yes. So. <laughs> I will apologize. I, I just so for, I, I no, no, for total transparency, I had COVID last week and my grandmother passed away. So oh, life hit me hard <laughs> last week. So I'm not gonna tell you anything. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't say that for that key part. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Okay. Perfect. So any other comments or reactions within the existing park inventory and trail network? Again, that's a very bulky and big section, um, but just wanting to recognize again that um, we wanted to, that, you know, the description um, of the different parts takes up a fair amount of space within the document, but it's, I think it's an important thing to just recognize what we are classifying as those different um, areas. There's a good discussion I did highlight in the presentation about some of our park amenities and partnerships. So that's an opportunity for us to highlight that relationship with the school district. Um, and so we, you know, in our needs assessment, we recognize those school parks and wanted to make sure that we are, that it's critical that those agreements stay in place. If that, if for some reason the school district pulls out and says, no city you can't use our our programming offerings are going to change immensely. Um, so that's what the discussion on page 21 and then making sure that we're highlighting, you know, some of the like the relationship with Grow to Share, with Cork, the Baseball Council, Youth and Adult Sports Associations and the Disc Golf Club. So where we have active volunteer partnerships that allow us to provide and maintain some of the amenities and services within our parks that we were highlighting those as well and connecting them to um, the different parks um, where those amenities are located. I have um, a comment on the regional parks. It says regional parks are designed to serve several neighborhoods or an entire community, meeting the needs of all age groups. And um, we've talked about this before, but it seems to me that if we're going to designate something a regional park, it should at least have bathrooms and drinking fountains. And the Sanctus Park has porta potties. Sure. So, you know, and I know that's a big expense to put in bathrooms, but if you're, if you're saying that this is for all age groups, et cetera, I can't imagine being there with a three-year-old and they have to go to the bathroom. Well, it's the same at Caulfield. Caulfield is just Caulfield got the port, too? Yeah. The port so, so, yeah. Sure. So, and I think that's a good comment for us to consider when we're thinking about maybe the policy and some of the recommendations at the end that would be, I don't, you know, the achieving that is there's a lot of things that come into play on being able to achieve that, you know, funding and opportunities, but that's something we could identify in those recommendations of a policy to consider if we wanted to um, from that standpoint, but that's, so um, I don't, I wouldn't want to change it here because you're, I don't think we want to change golf view from out, out of a regional park just because of the back of that at this point, um, but it's maybe an opportunity for us to identify. The so is it more just the size? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So I just, then I would take out that it's meeting the needs of all age groups. But um, it, this isn't a hill I'm going to die sure. on. You yeah. know, I just, it just, to, to me, if, if something's considered a regional park and we're saying this is for the entire community meeting all their needs, it just doesn't do that. But 
Sure. And we could soften that statement um, a little bit to just that we are, you know, trying to provide a broad range of amenities and things like that. Maybe we just soften the statement. And it could be softening the statement and adding it into the implementation as a consideration. Yeah, mm -hmm. considering these regional parks, some of them do not meet all of the amenities needed at this time. Yeah. And I don't know if the DNR see, I don't know what the DNR considers a regional park. With this is park. yeah, so we the park classification that we're using here align. There's some things that are tailored to River Falls, but they do align with how the, the state comprehensive yes, outdoor yes. recreation plan considers these definitions. Category. So that is a requirement of that the DNR is asking us to see how we comply with state standards for outdoor recreation as well. So, and that definitely meeting the needs of all age groups is definitely a phrase that kind of comes from that statewide perspective, kind of thinking of it from a broad perspective. Okay. Um, so with that, I mean, I wanted to call up here too that we've got the the one park in there that tries to highlight. We'll have some changes to make to to that figure when we, um, you know, don't include the you know Hoffman Park amenities and things like that. But um, wanted to just get a reaction here too. I on if there anybody had any? There's a lot of pages in here that get into the description and characteristics of each of these par parks, but. Any reactions to how this information was presented? You could take this and put this in an appendix for that example to reduce the bulk of the plan, but I just wanted to see if anybody had any. I think you guys did an excellent job on the descriptions. I mean, spot on. Mm -hmm. okay. And there will be some updates to the imagery. Mm -hmm. That's you know, another example there that we're including. Trying to include something a little bit more active and exciting than the sign, for example. So, okay. Um, so then, keeping us moving, um, moving into our needs assessment. Um, the you know so we spent we've spent a couple meetings talking about the kind of quantitative and qualitative assessment. So again. The quantitative assessment being those metrics that we use to see how we're marking up against communities of similar size on a national basis. And then that qualitative assessment, the responding to the what we've heard from the community on what they'd like to see and using both of those in tandem to support the recommendations that are outlined. Um, and then there is a section about the related uh, recreation plans um, in the needs assessment as well. This is a requirement of the DNR as well. So making sure that we're connecting back to, um, you know, the county's plans and things of that nature. So um, I, you know, from a high level needs assessment, and we've talked through the details of this, I do want to recognize again, as Amy mentioned, where there's some double checking occurring on that um, on our amenities assessment or our inventory um, there, but I don't think that there's going to be anything that will change the results of our um, of that assessment from a quantitative perspective. Um, but really at a high level, and we've talked about this before, we throw in the numbers there so we can just see how those different metrics uh, mark up, but really as a result, the areas in which the quantitative assessment is showing that we have a deficit is Today, we could use another outdoor ice rink. That's what that standard tells us. Um, by 2030, which we are using as our kind of short term outlook. Um, so, again, the DNR is asking us once uh, an outdoor, from a DNR's perspective, we should be looking at the next five years. We took that out to 2030 just because we're, we'll adopt this plan in 2023. So, it's seven years, but that's not a big deal. Um, so a pool is where we, we fall there from a deficit perspective. And then by 2045, it's saying to support the population that we've established within the Focus River Falls process, we'd need another skate park. Um, so of course, this doesn't, there aren't metrics that we're using for every single amenity type that we have within the community. It's really specific to um, those recreation specific amenities. The great part about that is it's showing that we have we have a good number 
of amenities. And when, and when we take, um, there's the discussion within here as well about the you know, acres of park per capita and the number of park per capita we're doing well in terms of that access to um, outdoor recreation as well. I won't go through all of the you know, details. There's a lot of words up here, but the qualitative assessment um, portion of what we highlighted here was hitting on a couple of those high level components um, that we that were identified through all phases of the Focus River Falls process. So trying to take, take taking this back to our meeting in February of, of February of this year when we were talking about recreation and then the survey and the pop-up events that occurred um, this late summer, early fall in terms of what are, were some of the things that we were hearing and trying to um, you know, be representative and, and bring everybody in. So there is notation in, in that section of you know, some specific connections <laughs> to the engagement, but also trying to highlight what that means for the community as well. So, you know, the community desires outdoor recreation opportunities in all seasons, right? I don't think that's of any surprise, but we, we've heard that, you know, uh, throughout um, that there's also at the end support for indoor recreation um, investments. That's something we're talking about in the in the comprehensive plan since this is the outdoor recreation plan but that's a component of recreation it's one to highlight things of that nature but um that we use multiple modes of transportation to access outdoor recreation opportunities and we want to maintain that you don't that you can access outdoor recreation by walking biking and multiple modes and things of that nature so that section really and i you know we don't get won't go through all of the details of each of them, but highlight some of those ideas and concepts about some of those key topics that we've heard from the public um, from that perspective as well. Um, I did want to call out here as well, I didn't put it in um, the presentation, but also wanted to recognize the kind of service area uh, mapping that was done. There's some maps that look at um, kind of a service area for our parks on a quarter mile and a half mile buffer standpoint. So generally speaking, a half mile is considered a walkable distance. And if you look back to the kind of definition of a neighborhood park specifically, it's meant to serve that area within a quarter mile or a half mile. Um, and so, excuse me, the two maps that are included in here take apply that quarter mile and half mile buffer to all of our parks. And then there's a second map that does that for just our regional and neighborhood parks because they provide a slightly different function, um, you know, than a linear park and things of that nature. So the great part that we can see there is that there's pretty decent coverage of the community in, in gray areas, even when we look at the, the regional park, regional and neighborhood park um, service areas. But this is also a tool that we can be thinking about and using in relation to when we get to the point where, okay, we know that there's a deficit um, in uh, that we could be using another regional park um, years down the road. This is our opportunity for this level of analysis to say, where are some of those, uh, where is that gap? Of course, the hard we know from a future land use plan perspective, we're planning where that growth may occur too. So that's gonna change whenever that happens as well. So we have a- I have a question. Yeah. So um, on the map that is the regional and the neighborhood parks? Yep. I'm curious about the buffers. It would seem to me that a regional park wouldn't use the quarter mile and the half mile buffer. It would have a much larger buffer. So, and that would help us to sure. potentially place the next regional yeah. park if we had a realistic view of its buffer zone. Can you talk to that a little bit? Yeah, so that becomes a little bit of a gray area of, because I think the term service area makes it, there's, there's looking at a buffer from a, a walkability access, so from just a connectivity perspective. So if I'm going to walk to a regional park, I, that half mile buffer is generally, you know, that, that good walkable distance. But you're right, the, the hard part is from a service area perspective, and our definition says that the service area could be the entire community. So there isn't, um, a, in the same way that we have a service area of a quarter mile to a half mile for a neighborhood park, there isn't a good, and especially for a community of River Falls, as, as if we were the city of Minneapolis, 
there are lots of different factors that you should think about who, who a regional park actually serves. So it is for for us, it's a little hard, you know, in the fact that our regional parks have been parking amenities and it's not like you can't, you know, access any of those from any part of the community there too. So it becomes a little um, challenging for, you know, truly what that definition is when we really think about those regional parks providing a community wide service. So from that perspective, we were thinking about the general location and the, the walkability component of trying to think about where maybe there were some otherwise gaps, of course, you know, the a neighborhood park, particularly as we're developing new neighborhoods, we should just be thinking about new neighborhood parks like that's just a standard practice right um but max you've done a good job of that you know sterling ponds popped up we have a park as part of that right with us like just a part of our planning practice but the investment and decision making that goes into a regional park you know there's a lot more that goes you know into that process as well so i know i'm not really answering your well, question you are yeah. and i think it is in the text but when you just look at the map and you see regional and neighborhood park service areas and you think about who they're servicing you might not always think about the yeah. walking perspective and I'm not sure how that could get tied in for a better frame of reference or yeah not, but we can think about that yeah and i think maybe one thing could be and i think in an initial draft we had the regional parks separate from the neighborhood parks and i think maybe that would benefit us from a because if, we, if it's just the neighborhood parks then it truly is the service area because that's 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 our defined service area if we then have a map that's just the regional parks in these buffers the frame of reference there is and you know i'm seeing a asterisk and a note in this white space that says <laughs> these parks are intended to serve the community as a whole the, the shaded areas show a you know a typical walking distance for us to be sure you know, I like that that um yeah and I think there's you know um opportunities for you know how this happens in the future you know this gets overlaid onto your future land use map you know when you're really trying to identify where that regional park goes it's now putting the future land use map on top of that and where are those logical growth areas because if we can group that you know into the convert that's you know better investment in those types of things along the way but yeah any other comments questions on the needs assessment i want to make sure um for those of you online i haven't been meaning to ignore you but any Reactions or comments from any of you, feel free to chime in as well. Okay, Gary. So, okay. so, when you say those are where we're deficit at those particular years, it's based off our population. Yeah. Is there anything accountable? I mean, just we're acknowledging that we're short here, but the city doesn't, it's not like you have to do that. Correct. So, we're just saying, hey, we know that. According to the numbers, this is where we really need to add. But yes, uh, yeah. So yeah, there is an opportunity for us to add there. I think the other, you know, kind of on the flip side, if you were to look at the, you know, total number of playgrounds, like it shows that we have way more playgrounds than a community of this size needs. But that we're not going to go remove playgrounds because we're we have more right they provide so there's that's where i think that balance of the quantitative and qualitative i mean we've heard the one thing i would say is like skate park we've heard that we want more outdoor ice rinks we've heard that so we see that in the numbers and in the input the pool we've heard about that in the, in the input and we've seen it in the numbers skate park is it's been the, mentioned. It's been mentioned, but it's not as an overwhelm as much of an overwhelming, you know, piece. And by twenty forty five, you know, who knows it's going to be. Well, yeah, because it's like when we did pickleball eight years ago. I mean, it was we, you know, we never thought it was going to be as much as a sport as it is now. Yes. You know, it was like, yeah. 
So yeah, I just mean to maybe specifically and to try to more specifically answer your question. This is just as a tool in the toolbox, but it's not holding our feet to the fire that like we better put in the outdoor ice rink before we do any other investments in our recreation system. It's not holding our feet to the fire <laughs> um, from that standpoint. Um, the one piece is that if we, you know, if you decided that you wanted to go after a DNR grant to help, you know, fund that ice rink showing the need in this document at this level makes you a lot more eligible like you know the dnr is like, oh yeah it's their plan says that they need it the numbers show it I, they don't give money away that easily but <laughs> i'd like to think that they would so, so that, okay uh, so the last piece um, of the plan is really gets into our recommendations and implementation. Um, and so for us trying to think about the kind of recommendations and priorities that we've laid out, um, this is really categorized into some improvement projects. Um, there's a couple things in here where um, they're, you know, from a master planning, you know, the Sterling Ponds or Glen Park master plans, making sure that we were recognizing <laughs> the things that have been already identified in those planning projects as activities that we want to um, undergo, but then also thinking about some of the um, broader needs from an all parks and recreation areas uh, perspective. So that construction of a new regional park is identified there as a high priority within the, the long term being a 2045 um scenario there as well but there's also ongoing things like the you know incorporation of the green corridors as a planning tool you know as we're thinking about um, investments and things of that nature as well uh, we also have opportunity projects identified which are um you know things that are that need a little bit more work and investment before we could you know grab on to a couple of those things or they're maybe discussed in other ways so um you know, the new pocket park, for example, is, you know, there's um, pocket parks are a nice little amenity. They're an easy way for us to capture an opportunity to provide an additional um, recreation resource, but they're not something that you maybe go out and plan as much as you do a regional park or a neighborhood park. It's not that we, oh, here's a new subdivision. We need to have a new pocket park, but there's an opportunity if, you know, something arises. Um, for us to capitalize on some of those things. A subdivision has a weird, we can have another, you know, triangle park opportunity where we've got this little, you know, space that's something for us to do. So um, those opportunity projects are things that if the opportunity arises, they are things that we can capitalize on. The community center, though it's not a form of outdoor recreation, we wanted to make sure we highlighted here. The big piece of that being, you know, we recognize that this is something that the community wants but there's lots that comes into play for that to be something that we can achieve. You know, it's like somebody's gonna win the lottery and donate the money to, you know, create a community. It's kind of off topic, but are there ever precedents for communities or community centers like that if they had a high interest in those? And it's clear that they're really spending and the money's hard to come by. Do communities ever raise funds in any alternative ways in support of projects like that? Yes. Usually by donation, wouldn't you say the, the yeah. main part? Of Most commonly is by donation. Um, I, you know, you could try to look at different funding. You know, it, it's, you know, collaboration and increasing taxes, or you know, the just the revenue opportunities are not are really hard to to come by. So um, there are communities that have tried to work around, but it's you know those are votes that are you know community wide that take you know some different ways of looking at funding that are can be hard to get everybody to agree behind. So um, you're not the only community that we've worked with that a community center is. So they never put any like tax or anything. Like for some more people go and turn it on. That you know, so that's a tool that you could, you know, that could you know try to go through, but I don't I haven't seen anybody successfully do that. So because um, there are lots of other you know, infrastructure items that unfortunately end up usually coming before our recreational use like that. You know, we need to maintain our roads. We need to make sure everybody has access to clean water. Those those key components end up being funded um, before things like a community center. So, um, 
I just got to win the lottery, man. Okay. <laughs> I tried. That's all we got to do. Yeah, we all tried. Yeah. We all had the best <laughs> intentions, you know. Oh, as we were running through this, I was thinking about your presentation way earlier in the process and talking about our quick system from a maintenance perspective. And I don't want to put you on the spot because we haven't talked about this, but did you find when you did all of the analysis any areas where we can get maintenance efficiencies or change up how we're doing things or any of that piece that could come into here yeah i mean i think we could talk about that um a little as well because i think there's the one thing from an analysis standpoint is you are especially in like some of the winter grooming and some of those things, you're doing more than other communities as well. So there are, but I, oh, so it's like wanting to recognize those great things, you know, that you are, you know, doing some of these, you know, all seasons maintenance and opening, you know, those kinds of things. I think we probably didn't do the good enough job of recognizing that activity in here and that that's probably something that should be, you know, maintained and, and things of that nature. I think the one piece, from an analysis standpoint, and there are metrics from uh, when we compare, you're like way over the bar in terms of the number of parts and an acreage of parts compared to similarly sized communities. But when it comes to the number of staff that you have from a maintenance and operations standpoint, there's like very small, very small. Um, so, um, you know, I think like, you know, yeah. so the hard part about that is like, somehow you have the right recipe that we're able to <laughs> maintain and offer things at this high level of service, but, you know, as, you know, new staff changes and things. So it's a hard thing because it's not, there's the metrics behind that are not as easy to quantify, um, but I think there's probably value in recognizing that disparity um, and, you know, recognizing that, you know, as we add new parks, there's only so much, you know, that can't be done. Well, and that's the conversation that if Mike were here and if Mike were staying, <laughs> <laughs> he would be he back. Feel guilty. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And I mean, I think there's uh, um, the whole volunteer capacity of things as well. Like, we, you know, like Matt alluded to, of the disc golf club disbands now all of a sudden you're maintaining can't you know I know disc golf isn't but or something that requires a lot of maintenance but you know or the stadium becomes you know that's a huge but, but it seems to me for a community our size we have quite a few of those partnerships oh yes mm -hmm. I mean I could see it in a much more larger communities but we're, we're fairly small and we don't have done really well with those partnerships oh yes so yeah yeah okay so I think um you know, just as maybe some, another comment to note here that making sure that in our um, implementation here, we add some notation on the maintenance and operations front and being mindful of, of what we're doing there. So any opposition to us adding that? No. Yeah. Okay. Um, I did want to call out here as well, just kind of in moving through things as well, the capital improvement plan. Again, we made reference to that, but the CIP itself is included in Appendix C with the intention that when this plan moves online, that new CIP is developed, you can just push it out. Um, so, you know, no updates required there. Um, but then we did want to make sure from an equi uh, the implementation mechanisms, um, really the, the bulk of things here on the, some of those acquis uh, acquisition tools and recognizing some of the financial resources that are available. To us, and as you look through, trying to we tried to use a, a standard format that talks about who's the, the organization that um, administers the funding or the program, what deadlines are in place, how much, what costs the city has to have, and you know what what the organization might match in some of those things, um, and what the eligibility is. You know, there's one that county conservation aids. You know, we have to partner with one of the counties to be applicable. We can't, you know. River Falls is the county, so you can't apply for it directly from that perspective. Um, so wanted to recognize, you know, these tools that are 
available for us. This piece will grow and change, but there's some good context um, that comes into some of those things as well. Um, and I wanted to recognize, so, and I think a the highlight there is all of the, you know, the first number of them are all DNR um, grant funding opportunities. So again, the establishment of this outdoor recreation plan helps with the eligibility. And when you go to apply for these, being able to connect that back to the requirements that are within this plan, you know, helps um, in the potential for receiving those funds um, as well. So, um, yeah, that's good. It, it's good reference, you know, that people. Are I have a question yeah. underneath. Uh, I guess again, underneath the recommendations and priorities. Um, when I look at the bottom of page 50, uh, it talks about up to the update the outdoor recreation plan every five years, high priority short term. So, if we happen to put in uh, uh, the ice rink, uh, that seems like an easy update. Mm -hmm. You know, when this update comes due, uh, oh, we added the ice rink, and make sure we include that. Yeah. Oh, what about the bulk of, of like the community engagement? When when we find out what people want, well, and what I'm what I'm leading to is how invasive is this update every five years? Do we resurvey the entire community? Um, you know what I mean? Yes. Like, or, or is the update simply well, we added the skate? Yeah. You know, the skating rink. So just sure. add that to it, and then because I, I guess I mean I think as as I highlighted in the previous slide about. How you know the, the community changes? Yeah. Uh, how do we know? You know. So again, I, I guess that's just my big question: is is how in depth does the update get? Yeah. So that's a really great question. Why we um, included the five years is that's the cycle that the DNR asks for you to refresh comp plan every ten years. DNR asks for this every five. Does it have to happen every five? No, not necessarily. But at least we can identify that benchmark. To get back to specifically the DNR requirements to get to your question about engagement, um, the DNR asks you that from an assessment standpoint, either you could we could have just looked at those numbers and those metrics, and we wouldn't have had to engage the community at all. So at a bare minimum, you could go in and we want to update this plan in five years. Great, we have you know a couple new amenities, we've got a new park, we could literally just rerun that the uh, quantitative part of the assessment and maybe add a statement or two that this qualitative, you know, analysis was based on our last update and, you know, that we didn't update that, you know, we could just kind of leave that information there. That would still meet all of the DNA, DNR's requirements for an updated plan. Um, now, if, you know, things have changed and you're hearing rumblings, that is that it could also be that we want to you know, we, there's been a big discussion between tennis versus pickleball or something like that. Maybe your only engagement is a survey that, you know, gets specifically out of use like that. Like, do we get rid of all of our tennis courts and convert them all to pickleball courts? You could do like that minimum level of engagement too to really respond to things that are active in the community as well, and then leave the rest of the context there as well. So. It allows you to kind of, you know, maintain the things that are working for you, um, but uh, and then that's kind of the hope there too with um, the community context section too is trying to have the pieces that are in there, trying to keep them simple enough that we can, you know, and of course, the great part about the timing of when we did this, we used 2020 census information, so there'll be new estimates in five years, so you could update it by the estimates, but we use the census number, so those aren't going to be new until 2030. So, you know, Do you ever take the appendixes out of them for the next round. Yes, because obviously this survey will be five right. years old. Yes, years but, old. but again, you could right. reference that the appendix includes a survey that was completed in 2022. And, you know, so it's just referencing that. Yes, it's old data, but it's still community relevant, you know, data, even though. So the update age. then, I mean, it really kind of comes down to it will be uh as complete as the city at that time wants to invest exactly. money and time into exactly yeah 
Yeah. It's actually interesting to think about the cycles because I could wholly see us doing the qualitative, mm -hmm. quantitative, quantitative yeah. in five years and then doing a complete update again in 10 years when we update the comp plan just like we did and getting the, the qualitative input at that point. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it could simply run on yeah. that kind of cycle. Yeah, well, there's no mention in here by 2027, Lake Louise by the Kinney Corridor Plan is to be a 16 acre park. And it's not mentioned in here. It's not part of the capital improvement plans. It's, it's the words aren't even here. So we know that's going to have to change if we, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you. Uh, that answered that, that, that answered exactly what I wanted to do. Okay. Um, and then I don't think I don't have any slides in here, but just recognizing again um, the appendices that are included within the document include our kind of our engagement summary specific to the the survey and pop up events that were you know part of that um, occurred this year. The capital improvement plan again that can be swapped out as needed, and then the um, the last includes our um, inventory, which again there we're gonna probably be a couple tweaks um, in here, but we yeah. will go through. It's got one one picnic table in Hoffman Park. <laughs> missing a couple of digits. Huh? <laughs> Well, maybe now there's only one. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> but yeah, go back and verify. But we will also be, you know, there. The special use parks are listed on here, so they will come out with the inventory. I think technically, in some cases, we'll want to just make sure that we're not double, have it double counted. You know, from that perspective, I know in the inventory we only included the seven plots you know once we didn't include 14 because they were i don't know how you guys do that counting all the benches and counting all the that <laughs> is there was some really great work so we had a staff member that went and visited all the parks but the parks team was like team was critical and like and put a helium balloon on and once you count you put a helium balloon okay don't count that with or paint it pink yes <laughs> put a red on it. Yeah. Perfect. And I think an exciting part that's happening here too is um, Amy's team is working with GIS to do an inventory mapping of this exercise. So we've got, you know, where we, the parks are and understanding of the amenities, but specifically understanding the location of these different amenities as well. And that's part of what's triggering us to just make sure that we have all of these um, numbers correct and that we've used consistent metrics across the board. Playgrounds, for example, you know, if it's a two, you've got a play structure here and a play structure over here, then you're saying there's two, but, you know, having a five, you know, five to 10 year old playground in a, you know, four and under playground that got counted as one, you know, kind of piece. So just making sure that we're consistent across the board. We don't, they're, they're pretty positive that it won't put any, there's nothing in there that will probably put us into it, adding a new deficiency, you know, from that standpoint, we've got, we're doing so well on those amenities provisions. So, yeah. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. you. Fabulous job. And you're very easy to listen to. You're mm -hmm. talking, you know, sometimes you have someone who's, who's talking as much as you have to talk. Like, oh my God. <laughs> but no, you're, you're very you. easy and engaging. Thank you. Um, so with that, I think um, I just maybe want to highlight on um, kind of next steps. So we're just all in understanding of where we are going, um, but we will be assessing and making some updates here. And I apologize, the squeaky table is But we'll be making a few updates there as well. Um, we do have a plan commission steering committee meeting tomorrow night. Their big task is the part, um, primarily the um, bike and pedestrian plan to take action and review that document, but we will be giving them an update on where we're at with the recre outdoor recreation plan. We are not asking them to take action on that tomorrow night because they have not received 
the document from that perspective. So uh, we'll be working on um, plan updates and taking this to the, the plan commission for um, their action here in January. Um, but just wanted to reference as well that February is our target for um, the public plan review of the suite of our three plans um, in the month of February. So we will be getting these plans out on Engage RF ahead of that time. So they will be available to the public um, before the comprehensive plan is. Um, just for reference, January is really focused on the plan commissions as the steering committee, their review um, of the comprehensive plan and making updates there. February is completely focused around the public review of these plans. So we will be, we're trying to be really thoughtful about how the community can engage with this plan in a virtual environment. So on their own time, but then also having a, um, an, an open house or we're like, is it a party, a, you know, a celebration of the work that we've all done together over the last um, 18 months and things like that um, and collecting comments there um, and then looking at adoption of these plans in March. So from a comp plan perspective, the plan commission will uh, recommend approval in March uh, to the council and then at the, fin the council's final meeting in March, they will take action on all three plans at once. So these plans won't be finalized until that final meeting of the council in March. So am I missing anything? So we didn't provide you a resolution this evening, but if you are being able to plan moving forward, it would probably be helpful if we had a motion to put it forward to public question. Okay. So with maybe the changes that we discussed this evening. Mm -hmm. So I want to move to move this to the, the sit to plan commission, right? Yep. And then on Can I hear a motion to uh, move the outdoor recreation plan to the uh, planning commission? Also moved. I'll second. All those in favor say yes. 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 All those opposed say no. Oh, Make sure that you get online. Oh, online. Yeah. oh sorry. Yes. Wake up. Yeah. <laughs> or return to the room. <laughs> Alyssa, are you there? <laughs> Alyssa? We maybe just can't hear her. <clears throat> she muted. And where is muted? Yeah. And Melissa, I don't. Oh, Melissa's. I'm here. Okay. okay. Good. Okay. Yeah. There. Yeah. There we go. So we just had a motion and a second to move the outdoor recreation plan to the plan commission. And I've asked all those in favor say yes. Yes. Alyssa? You can yes. add your hand. Okay. <laughs> all those opposed say no. The motion has been approved. You have to say it through the council too or no? No, it, never mind. Just no, the it, it will go thank you. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. So, and if uh, just I want to recognize you, it's been a pure pleasure of mine to make these trips to the community and engage with you all on uh, this process. You are, I've told this to Amy multiple times that uh, if I was an engineer, maybe I'd come take Mike's job. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but you are a very engaged and, you know, board and the community as a whole. So it's been a really fun um, project to work on. Obviously, we're not done. There's still more to come, but I uh, really want to thank you for putting up with me uh, throughout this process, listening to me, you know, talk for hours on end through these meetings. It's been really enjoyable to getting, getting to know all of you. So. Well, and we will keep you posted as well when it's going to um, plan commission and then to council and, and obviously through the public engagement in February because this isn't the end. <laughs> we'll ask you to still be engaged and do the rest of the process too. So, yeah. Okay, great. Good. Thank you. Thank you. So the next thing on our agenda is uh, the resolution recognizing the park inventory. And who's going to talk to this? Amy, Amy, Amy. Um, 
I, I think it's pretty well laid out in the memo from Jason. Um, I'm here if you have any questions regarding it, but it's really just reiterating what you heard tonight um, in a resolution fashion. And then also as part of that resolution, making sure that um, the park rules are carried throughout through all of the parks consistently. I, I only have questions, um, again, I think you caught it, the Sanctus Park is spelled wrong. Um, when we, we talk about athletics, is there a place, because it, it, I get it that it's talking no hardball on athletic grounds. Um, Which you, part are you referencing, I'm sorry, Patricia? I'm sorry. On, on the... The, uh, the rules? The, oh, the rules are something completely different. If that's, okay. if that's a... That'll go back to policy. So okay. If you guys want to actually review that, that would be something different. Okay, because I, I would I would prefer some definite like air guns. It it talks about his or her control of any air gun. And I'm like, why why are we picking on air guns? Why not guns? Um, okay, so has everyone had a chance to review yes. the designation of park cities or of city parks? I guess I have some questions. Yes. And you kind of highlighted it when we were talking about the plan, and that was some possible discussion or disagreement. Uh, and I'm, I'm specifically highlighting then of these classifications. Um, where you had just happened to mention, uh, you know, you didn't feel that uh, the Sanctus, I think you said, yeah. should be possibly included as a regional park. And in, in, the, in the frame of the plan, that's one thing, but as I'm looking at this, if we, you know, do a resolution and it's in here, doesn't that then kind of, you know what I mean? Like, it kind of, does that kind of close the discussion then on yeah, any of those things? Yeah, it would not. It would not close the conversation. When when this memo was drafted, it was drafted based off of what was already highlighted in the outdoor rec track plan prior to the discussion tonight. So that was just taking that information in there to give you all context of what we're going to be looking at. Um, but it, based on this, the resolution doesn't actually make that designation. The resolution itself just indicates that you're recognizing these as our city parks not represented under any specific category, um, and then uniformly um, enforcing the park rules across the board. Did that answer? And yeah, I, the, I guess it does, but then I, I understand it was based off of the, the, the plan that yeah. we just saw. I, I guess I just don't understand why they're, they're organized then if they're not really based on the organization. Do you know what I mean? And, and then you say, well, we pulled it from the plan. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I, and that, that comes in a little bit more for the DNR's aspect of as, as to why we're calling it a regional park or why we're calling it a neighborhood park. I just want to highlight, I want to make sure everybody feels comfortable, I guess. You sure. know, Absolutely. That, that's why I'm discussing yeah. this. It's not whether or not I believe, you know, DeSantis Park is or isn't. It's, I guess I'm trying to maybe encourage, are we all kind of, I mean, Again, how, how binding is it if it's on this and then we maybe don't all agree with this, et cetera, et cetera. I, I see I, that's so all what I'm you're saying is, is this is the res this is the memo that goes with the resolution. The resolution itself just says yeah, that these yeah. parks, not not identifying them specifically as okay. regional or pocket. Um, the memo goes into that, which of course the memo is that is part of this. Um, or we wouldn't have the memo. Um, but if we were to, to acknowledge this resolution and pass this res resolution tonight, it's the words on the resolution. Okay, okay. Yeah, I just wanted to have the discussion. I just wanted no, to make sure that, you know, that, that everybody's maybe seeing as I kind of, you know, kind of understanding. Because in, in five years from now, when someone comes back and wants to know how did this get passed, this is going to be part of it. And our discussion is going to be part of it. And they're going to say, well, you know, whatever they gleaned from this. But the resolution tonight um, is this one piece of paper that was attached to your packet. So has everyone had, boy, you wrote all over that. <laughs> I wrote all over that. 
Um, so uh, is, is there any comments or questions about it? Brandon's got yeah, I, I'm satisfied now. Yeah, okay, thank you. So um, I'm looking for a motion to pass the resolution recognizing the park inventory. I'll move to uh, pass the resolution recognizing the park inventory. I'll second that. Okay, we have a first and a second. Any comments or questions? All those in favor say yes. 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 All those opposed say no. Okay, the resolution passes. All right. Anybody got, is Mike still with us? Mike went, Mike, so can't no, wait, wait, wait. Yeah, say goodbye to him. Um, so I'm looking for. Um, I, well, I had the holiday trees on there. Oh, I, 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 I think sorry. I want to pull it because, you know, it was just, I, you know, I might want to decorate, you know, the lodge. Knowing that you know there 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 can be you know holiday tree versus Christmas tree versus you know military. Um, we haven't been asked this year if there's been any you know any trees in the parks or decorations, and I think we'll just leave the decorations up to the people who are decorating for their holiday party. Because okay. if I'm not here and we say well, we we can have a a tree in there, and who's going to do it next year, Brenda? Um, <laughs> But yeah. she's got like eight of them at her house. Thirteen, and they're all spoken for this year. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so I think I want to pull it and say that. It, yeah. Okay. Yes. What was a good question? Um, I think, thank you guys for not answering at all. But anyway. <laughs> all the women answered. You didn't get my. You didn't get my. No. No, I did not. You were going to cut down a tree and bring it in and all that stuff, right? No. So, anyway, so now you can. Okay. So I'm looking for a motion to adjourn. Thank you. All those opposed, are all those in favor say yes? Yes. Yes. Nice seeing you guys. Bye bye. 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 Bye.